honor Frank Galata not only for his skill as an outfitter, but for the example he set for us. In the beginning of the 20th century, he laid the foundation for the way for us to live here in the beginning of the 21st. He worked for the forces of progress, working for the railroads as they spread across western Canada. He outfitted the first survey crew for the Alaska Highway. He packed for oil explorers and miners. But even as progress became inevitable, he never wavered from his deep personal conviction that people should leave nature better than they found it. People should not take more than they need. He never overhunted and was a conservationist before it was clearly defined. He lived the outdoors with all of his senses. He hunted with a camera as well as a gun. He was a painter of outdoor art. He was a writer for Outdoor Life magazine. Frank Galata was one of those people who was trained to live within the constraints of civilization, but made the choice to follow the call of his heart to wide open wild. Born to Polish immigrant parents who were wood carvers by trade, he grew up in the railroad foundry town of Dunkirk, New York, on the shore of Lake Erie. Frank grew up working as a carpenter and a draftsman. He developed a great love for the outdoors, camping, fishing, skiing, and hunting in the Adirondack Mountains. Knowing there were higher mountains and wilder spaces, he soon headed west into Canada, and he kept going west, exploring as he went. He followed the grain threshers across the prairies into British Columbia, and there found his home close to the Peace River in Rolla, purchasing a farm in 1913 for $10. He farmed, but his reputation as an explorer was spreading. He was hired as a guide for the Henry Party in 1928 and the Charles Badeau Expedition in 1932. Frank guided for Count Letabo and learned the outfitting business. In 1936, he guided an Ohio hunter, Mr. L.S. Chadwick, into the Musqua River country of British Columbia in search of stone sheep. The Chadwick ram taken on that hunt is the only North American wild sheep ever recorded with horns that measured more than 50 inches. Frank's name was now tied to history, and he became a full-time outfitter. He and his wife lived happily beside the Peace River for 46 years. He was always close to the nature he loved. Upon his retirement in 1959, they moved to Shuswap Lake, about as close to civilization as Frank wanted to be, where he spent his time fishing and watching the seasons change. Frank once said, if I had to live my life over again, I wouldn't change a thing. Those are words that can only be uttered by a man who lived doing what he loved and at peace with the way he did it. As an outfitter, Frank Galata showed us the way to the wild peaks. As a man, he showed us the way to love and respect the land and its marvelous creatures. The Frank Galata Outstanding Outfitter Award recognizes a North American outfitter, Wild Sheep Foundation exhibitor and donor, who outfits primarily for mountain game, whose entire career has exemplified the honor and dignity of the proud profession of guide outfitting. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Frank Galata Outstanding Outfitter Award, WSF Past Chairman, Jack Atchison, Jr. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight, and I want to thank you all for being sheep hunters and caring. My father would uh, take us boys, my, my brothers and so forth, hunting on really tough deals once in a while, and he'd always say, I'll tell you when you're tired. <laughs> and I think we need to tell him that the Wild Sheep Foundation is not a bit tired. How about that? Come on. So we're here to honor the special people that uh, help uh, sheep hunters uh, explore the remote areas of the world and possibly get a sheep. And it's a 
it's a tough job they have. But you have to think about who were the first guides we had. It was the First Nation people. The First Nation people hunted all four of the sheep. They survived off of them. As people came to North America, they helped show them around. As time went by, uh, entrepreneurs realized that they can make a living out of it. And in 1902, up in the Yukon Territory, a tradition was developed. A man uh, took a Clinket Indian bride and developed a family, and a remarkable family, I've got to say. This family went on to have half a dozen different guiding areas in the Yukon Territory. They laid a footprint down like you can't believe. Their home base was on Kalani Lake. And I've, I've, I've hunted with David Dixon. It was one of my best trips. David and Tia, join me on stage. It's your moment. We really appreci appreciate what you've done over 120 years, basically. Remarkable. Wow, <laughs> that was a shocker. <laughs> Boy, I've seen some uh, great, great outfitters come up here and listen to their speeches, and I thought, wow, that's just unreal, man. Those guys sure did a good job, but I never, ever thought I'd be up here. <laughs> wow, just unbelievable. I. Uh, I started going in the bush with my dad in 1969. I started guiding for him in 1978. I guided Jack in 1980. I packed my kids in my arms going into our camps when they were like yearlings. It was like the little guy had to watch his mom when I packed him in there. Was, he had to see wherever she went. So he'd be over my arm looking at her while I was packing her in and chasing horses. My girl would be behind me. We'd be chasing horses down the trail and moving around. Oh, wow, this is great. Thank you very much. Thank you to Wild Sheep, this, the best organization in the world. Thanks to all you hunters I've guided and people.